Hi and welcome. My name is Rob Scott from UC Today and festive greetings to our Christmas Microsoft Teams news update. I'm joined by Tom Abuthnot, UC Solutions Architect, Microsoft's Certified Master, Santa Claus and MVP. Welcome, Tom. How are you? Yeah. Hey, Rob. Yeah, I'm good. Thanks. Yeah. Good to see you. Nice hat. Yeah, thank you. You the same. I'm impressed with the Christmas tree. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it is December. Uh, we're probably a little bit early on the uh, Christmas tree front, but uh, hey ho. I don't think anybody's worried about early this year. The Christmas lights around here have been going up since about mid-November, so everybody seems to be willing it forward a little bit. I know, isn't that crazy? We're all in lockdown and we're all desperate for Christmas. It just, <laughs> it's not, oh, it's a sad state. But um, Tom, you know, lots still happening on the Microsoft Teams front. We've got a, a good update again today. Um, hey, did you see the Slack news that came out last night? Yeah, very interesting. Yeah, hot off the press. So um, Salesforce potentially being a contender to buy them, uh, I think could be an interesting fit. I mean, they've got to they've got to find somebody ultimately financially. I think so. Um, yeah, a Salesforce would want to be more than just. CRM, so interesting. I would have thought Amazon would be the other contender for them, but uh, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, absolutely. So, so Slack, you know, being acquired by Salesforce. I mean, Salesforce, I, I, you're absolutely right. They can afford it, I'm, sure, I'm pretty sure. And uh, it, it really adds a little bit more value to their proposition too. So, wow. Yeah, we think about what they're trying to do as well. That you know, it's sales, marketing, business process stuff. They a comms platform fits well into their their dynamics for sure and it would be a, a massive upgrade from Chasa, which is a I think it's fair to say a bit of an also ran at the moment. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It was pretty good uh, you know, five years ago, but it's nothing compared with uh, Slack, I'm sure. So hey, we'll have to wait and see on that one. I don't want to kind of, you know, say say too much because it's not official. Uh, no, no, early, early rumors at the moment. Absolutely. Okay, Tom, so first let's talk about uh, you know the new DAU, I know it's been out a few weeks now, but we didn't mention it in the last video, but uh, the daily active user number for Microsoft Teams. Yeah, well. this, this came out just after our, our last recording, as Microsoft News tends to do sometimes. So on their latest financial update, they announced 115 million daily active users for Teams, uh, which is a significant jump from uh, October, uh, sorry, April 2020, we had 75 million DAU. So we've jumped up to 115 million DAU now. Yeah, it's a big number, isn't it? And it just seems to be, you know, going up at such a rate of knots. So, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure whether you've got a prediction, but do you think that number is going to continue to go up at, at the kind of rate it is, or do you think? Yeah, it's... I mean, yeah. So, so looking looking back at the numbers, I pulled them out of my blog. So the the numbers haven't been public always; they come in dribs and drabs. But the first numbers we got were 2019 July, and that was 13 million. Then November 2019 was 20 million. March significant jump to 44 in 2020, and then pandemic time it just went off the charts to this 115. But, I mean that's still well below the Office 365 numbers, so there's still more room for growth there potentially. Uh, Office 365 as a, as a service has a much higher user base. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, addressable market is potentially still. Huge for Microsoft going forward. The other thing Microsoft tried to do in that announcement, and we'll see if they stick with it, is they tried to land this new metric called daily collaboration minutes. And they're trying to say the sum of all user minutes in a 24 hour period across meetings, chat, document collaboration, co authoring. So that they're trying to shape a metric that says to the conversation, Teams is something you live in for your day, not you jump in and do your meetings and jump out. Uh, and this is a message they're constantly trying to land is Teams is, is your workspace, your hub, your collaboration space. It's not just the meeting. It's not just the phone calls. Yeah, interesting. It is the digital workplace. Yeah, absolutely. OK, let's talk about uh, Gartner's Magic Quadrants, because we saw two this month, uh, interesting. Well, in November, we saw two, interestingly. We saw the UCAS Magic Quadrant uh, come shortly after uh, the CCAS Magic Quadrant. But uh, Microsoft landed in the top right hand corner of the UCAS Magic Quadrant again. Tell us more. Yeah, so, so Gartner have got an interesting job these days because they used to have these very discrete magic quadrants and it was very obvious which vendors fit in which quadrant. And now, and you, I know you've seen this across a lot of your articles, you've talked about it, like who fits where? Is, is Teams meetings or is Teams UCAS or is Teams 
bigger than UCAS because it's UCAS also collaboration. Um, but yeah, unified communications as a service. So Ghana class that as telephony, meetings, messaging, and mobility. And uh, yeah, Microsoft hit the, the the highest top right in terms of which puts them in the leaders quadrant, which is based on kind of they say it's like convenience of vision and ability to execute. So you're trying to be top right with Gartner always. Yeah, it's always interesting to see what Gartner you know say about the brands. And there were a couple of cautions against Microsoft Teams. You know, what what did you think of those? Yeah, so, so they always try and put like a positive, so reasons why they're there and then cautions for people buying or customers to think about. Uh, and I, I find the cautions the most interesting because it's obviously interesting to see what they're picking up vendors on. But the first one they called out was 99.9 .9 SLA. Uh, so that is the Office 365 SLA, which uh, Teams falls under. And obviously traditionally in the Stephanie space, we talk about things like five nines. Uh, most of the UCAS vendors, some you know, will do at least 99.9, .9, but they'll probably do 99.99. .99. Uh, and it's interesting to me how little that comes up in conversation these days. I mean, obviously, higher is better, um, but with everybody working remotely and everybody needing the cloud for everything, the SLA for just UC seems to be less important than it was five years ago when I was often having conversations about dual PoE switches and dual routers and dual network connections and everything that just doesn't seem to come up as much with cloud services. That's interesting. That is an interesting point. Yeah, I see what you mean there. Yeah, th yeah. maybe that th there are alternatives now that are you know, equally uh, acceptable. So yeah. 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 Microsoft have the survival branch appliances coming, so that will let you have local telephony independent of the, the cloud service or your internet connection. Uh, so that would be probably the Microsoft response. It's like if you want your telephony to be even more resilient, go with your SBA. Yeah. But it is only telephony. I mean, frankly, for me, in my daily workflow, I could lose telephony long before I could lose meetings and, and collab. Like, actually, I've got a mobile. I can do PSDN calls as a backup if I needed to. But I, if I lose meeting ability, that that's my day gone pretty much. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Interesting that, isn't it? Okay, so um, let's talk about Teams public preview program because that you know this is quite an interesting one, isn't it? Yeah, so this is a really important one, probably for lots of listeners. Uh, Microsoft Forever have had an office program where you could elect to be in like the early ring or the fast ring. It's had about a dozen different names. Um, but the basic idea is you're kind of on a beta early test version. So you get to test, you get to give feedback, but also you get to see what's coming before your organization sees it. So really important with this pace of change to be able to comms to users, hey, this button's moving, this new feature's coming, that kind of thing. Uh, and there's been no ability to do that in Teams. So even when you elected in Office to be in the, the early ring, you couldn't do it in Teams. So now, quite a few years after Teams has been, been released, we're actually going to have an option to tick selected users into this, uh, what's called Teams Preview, and they will get features ahead of everybody else. Uh, they don't, they're not, it's not the technology adoption program where you have to give lots of feedback to Microsoft and be heavily engaged. It's just tick a box, put your 10 users in IT in or, or users across the business to get better feedback. Uh, but it's a great way for anybody who's more on the cutting edge to understand what's coming down the pipe. Yeah, I completely agree. And, and I'm a small business and we use Microsoft Teams uh, here in the UK. And one of the frustrating things is we, we're, we're talking about these new features on UC Today um, but we, we don't get them for quite a long time. So it'd be nice to, you know, jump in on those. Uh, that so every, everyone in the gang is going to be on preview then. Yeah, absolutely. We'll be there. <laughs> yes. Great stuff. Next up, we wanted to talk about the background noise in meeting. Yeah. Yes, background noise. This is such a hot topic across all the vendors. They're all trying to, to nail this. So Microsoft are now added, uh, it was announced quite early this year. I think it was announced March, but it's now rolled out that you can have AI noise suppression. So what this is doing is using compute cycles to dynamically remove background noise, things like uh, traffic noise or you know shouting or whatever it is uh, in the background you're meeting. And it seems to be so hot at the moment because everybody's working from home. There is a lot of background noise. Yeah, it, it, it is it's such a hot topic, isn't it? And uh, we saw um, Cisco uh, acquire uh, Babel, you know, to get that technology, and they they kind of planted that into WebEx very very quickly because uh, obviously they saw uh, 
uh, a, a requirement for it. I think Zoom has done it as well, and now Cisco, uh, sorry, now Microsoft's done it. It's, you know, it seems to be, you know, they don't do these things for no reason, do they? So, yeah, well, we're definitely anecdotally seeing a lot of people move from headset to speakerphone, like personal speakerphone, working at home. Yeah. Uh, because of kind of headset fatigue of being on it all day, every day. Yeah. Um, so that increases the likelihood of background noise. So this kind of tech can really help that, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, well done, Microsoft. And next up, we talk about the uh, very sad moment in uh, my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Skype for Business Online is retiring. Tell us more. Yeah, so, so Skype Business Online is retiring 31st of July 2021. That's hopefully not news to anybody anymore. Um, it's been announced a few times. So that, that clock is really ticking now. Um, but Microsoft are actively pushing it out of the door um, in terms of the admin center. So the admin center, as of this month, December, is going to be taken away. And you'll have to admin your remaining Skype Online users through the Teams admin center or through PowerShell. Um, so you can see Microsoft are already eyeing up things they can remove and take down and reduce their their, their service to maintain. Um, it, it doesn't impact the user experience in terms of end users, doesn't really impact admins that much other than they're clicking into a different portal. They still have all the same abilities. Uh, but yeah, just another sign that Microsoft is super keen to get SFBO shut down and gone. Uh, obviously server, lives on, they've announced uh, another server version coming, so that, this doesn't impact server at all. Uh, but yeah, Skype Business Online Admin Center is no more. Well, fair enough, yeah, we, we must move on, and then certainly Teams is, uh, you know, so just you know, it's just amazing really, isn't it, in terms of its uh, its features and functionality, and every every month we're talking about more features being added in, so um, yeah, it's, a, it's, yeah. A lot. it's becoming more and more the de facto. When you look at the, the amount of engagement and conversation around Skype Business Online going away, like every time I talk about it, there's less and less reaction or interest. Like, yeah, we're, we're on Teams, we're going to Teams. The, the pandemic just booted everybody to Teams really quickly to get the yeah. scale. So I think it's, it's much less of a story than it used to be. Yeah, no, fair enough. Well, the last story for today we'd talk about was uh, the, uh, the the addition of a Team apps uh, or Microsoft Teams apps in meetings. Yeah, easy for you to say. <laughs> no, I was thinking apps. I, I, I don't with the word apps. Go Everything's on. apps, isn't it? Yeah. So this is yeah, this is really interesting to me. Uh, it's apps in meetings, like literally during the meeting. So obviously we've had Teams apps forever, um, but this is surfacing them either before the meeting experience, like literally during the meeting experience, or after. Um, so your obvious ones are like collecting information before a meeting, doing a survey of feedback during the meeting, having a, a planner board or a Trello or whatever, du like literally during the meeting as a tab in the meeting experience. Uh, I, I think in terms of user experience, this is this is early, you know, it's just a, it's just a tab or an interaction in the chat panel. Um, but I think you can see where this is going down the road. It's, you know, you start adding in more clever AI, voice analytics, things like that, being able to, dynamically take actions or assign actions, or I can even see you being able to ask questions, having documents, you know, where's this document, where's that document? Uh, so this is the, the first inflation app. I think it's something to look look at and keep an eye on because it's only gonna get cleverer and cleverer. Yeah, absolutely. So it's all about bringing context to the, you know, the meetings and the conversations, but baked in, isn't it? You know, that kind of, you know, the holy grail of the single pane of glass uh, that the vendors talk about. Uh, it's yeah. bringing more and more Kind of application integration into the, the the teams experience and it's nice to see it be i mean obviously teams are trying to portray the story as you talked about at the top of the show of we're more than just jump on a meeting jump off we're more than just a phone platform we are collab but they have nice apis here to let third parties in so in terms of the the vendors launching there's lots and lots of third parties jumping on the bandwagon to do this it's not just microsoft tech it's, yeah. it's what anybody that wants to hit the apis really yeah, and we'll see more and more of this, you know, uh, yeah, application integration in, into the experience. I think it's really important um, going forward. And if Slack can, you know, claim a, you know, a sale price of 17 billion US dollars, then uh, there is uh, mileage in uh, you know, this <laughs> these ap applications within. Uh, the yeah, and, and Zoom is obviously the other one that's trying to land this. This it, apps is a big thing for them now. So. Indeed. 
everybody's trying to expand beyond the basic of a great online meeting. That's that's the bar now. Like, yeah, obviously you've got to have good codes, you've got to have noise suppression, you've got to have this and that. But how do you make the experience better or more productive? Indeed. So, yeah, I'm sure we're going to see a lot more on, on the kind of team apps front. So, hey, Tom, it's our last show of the year. We've done 12 video shows this year. Uh, we've been fantastically successful in terms of you know, viewers and subscribers and, and good quality feedback. So what's it been like for you? Yeah, I'm, I'm glad we I'm glad we jumped on the video bandwagon. It's interesting. Um, I get lots of feedback and but by far the majority of it is audio listeners. Um, and it's interesting. Obviously, people used to have it as a travel travel thing. There's less of that these days. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm really pleased with the numbers we're getting on, on video. It's like like lots of people are tuning into the show so thanks everybody who listens and we really thrive off the feedback you know we get lots of dms and feedback and stuff so anything we can do different or better or ideas for 2021 we'd like to hear that yeah and, and thank you to everyone for tuning in uh tom and i uh you know i know tom does carve out a little bit of his busy you know busy schedule uh for this every month so it's really appreciated and uh you know, thanks for tuning in. We're going to come back in January, early January, uh, with what is looks like to be some Microsoft Teams predictions for 2021. So do tune in for that. That's going to be really interesting too. But thanks. Yeah, for uh, that. there's a lot coming in 2021 that we already know about, and there's some things we can yeah, definitely talk about. So uh, yeah, that January show is going to be a forward look at 2021, and we can see how accurate we are as the year rolls out. Absolutely. And in terms of feedback, I'll leave a link in the description, but we'll be going social with this one. Uh, but we'll put in a post on LinkedIn uh, and, and asking for your feedback and ideas and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So do look out for that, too. And just take a moment just to give us a little bit of feedback. It's always appreciated. But for now, thanks, Tom. Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Thanks, Rob. And a Happy New Year. Bye for now.